السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر الله إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Indeed, our praise is due to Allah. We praise Him. We seek His help. And we seek His forgiveness. 
We see brethren with Allah from the evilness of our own souls and the evilness of our deeds and actions. Whoever Allah has guided them, there's no one to mislead them. Whomever Allah has led astray, there is no guide for them. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. He is one and doesn't have any partners or equals. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his worshipper and his final messenger sallallahu wa sallam As for what follows for indeed the most truthful of all speech is the book of Allah. And the best the most and finest of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the most evilest of affairs with Allah are newly introduced affairs to his religion. Muhdathat. For every newly introduced affairs to his religion will lead to innovation. Bid'ah. And every innovation will lead to misguidance. Dalala. And all misguidance ending places the hellfire. May Allah protect us and you from the hellfire. Ameen. Today we're going to talk about an important subject matter. And that is... Hurriya, freedom. Since this country proudly holds the banner of being a free country. But however, it is important for the Muslims, especially the younger Muslims, to know that this difference between Hurriya to Dumakaratiya, a democratic freedom, and Hurriya to Islamiya and an Islamic freedom. What Islam defines as freedom and what democracy defines as freedom. And this is important to be talked about because many Muslims don't know the distinction. And they think the freedom, the definition of freedom many people think that the definition of freedom here is in congruency or agrees with what Allah and His Messenger has defined in Islam as freedom. Two different, two different pictures. Freedom is a word that is beautiful. Everyone likes that word. Freedom is a word that is beautiful. And no one says it except with pleasure because everyone wants to have freedom. That's they born right to be free. But know that there is fawarikun azimah. There are tremendous distinctions and differences between what is defined as freedom here in America and the free world and what is defined as freedom in Islam. And they have things that are similar. First, freedom in definition is having ikhtiyar, having the right to choose for yourself which direction you want to go with yourself in your life. But unfortunately, many of the Muslims have taken the definition that the Western world has given us and has been muqtala, has been put to trial and test with this definition or their understanding of it that the West has and think it coincides and agrees with Islam. So for that reason, let's talk about the def clarify what is the definition of freedom in Islam and what is the evidence for that. The first definition of freedom is indicated in the ayah where Allah Ta'ala says in the Qur'an وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَىٰ Allah Ta'ala says and remember when your Lord took from the sons of Adam from the backs of them, their offsprings, their children, their offsprings. And he made them testify against their selves, saying to them, Alastu bi rabbikum, am I not your Lord? And we responded, they said, Bella, of course. This ayah. It's the foundation of what Allah defines in freedom, as we're going to see. Number one, the scholars of tafsir, the mufassirun, they all have said 
that the narrations from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are abundant and many pointing to the fact and Allah Azza wa Jal Lamma Khalaqa Adam that when Allah the Mighty the Sublime created Adam Masaha ala Dhahri Allah wiped the back of Adam and when Allah wiped the back of Adam Sakatat kulla nasamatan kainatan ila yawm al-qiyam that every soul that is going to be from the offsprings of Adam until the day of judgment came out of his back. Every one of us. Every one of us. This is an agreement with the scholars. And then Allah Ta'ala rakaba al-uqura. Then Allah formulated and fashioned their intellect to give them understanding after they came out of the back of Adam. After we all came out of the back of Adam. He gave them an intellect, the scholar said, from the hadith of the Messenger of Allah. And after he established their intellect, their intelligence, fi hadihi nasab, in every one of those souls, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made sure that they had fahi hatta fahima khitab Allah, until they were able to understand the address that was going to come from Allah, or what Allah was about to say to them. He, want, he made sure of that. They was able to understand that. And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked, and they, he asked them that question. Well, and every one of us answered. And he made us testify to this against our own selves. Fakal Allah. So Allah said, Alastu bi rabbikum. Am I not your Lord? Qalu bala. They said, of course. Meaning, of course, you are our Lord and our only deity that we must worship. That He put that in us, and that's the fitrah. That's the natural disposition that Allah placed in every human being from the son of Adam. And why did Allah Taala wa Taala do that? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala did this. To give them the asl hurriya, the foundation of freedom, which we said is being able to have the option to choose for yourself. So Allah put in the nature of every one of the sons of Adam to believe in Allah, to have the inclination to worship Allah. He made it a part of their natural selves. So the origin of every human being is to want Islam, they want to submit to their creator, for the, to worship Allah alone, without any partners. Just as the foundation of kufr is to worship other than Allah. Is to worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah protect us from worshiping other than Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah created Adam, when He's meant by Him us testifying that He's our Lord, is that He put it in our nature, that He put in all of us to have Iman, to believe in Allah. This is why the average disbeliever who reject all the formal religions, they say, I believe in God, but I practice no religion, because it's in their nature. But Allah Ta'ala gave this to the nature so that when the religion that come, when the religion of Islam come, they're able to choose the truth over falsehood. They're able to choose the truth over falsehood. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is why we find that this is a mithaq, a contract that Allah has taken with all of us, that's inside of every one of us. We don't remember that day, but we feel when we hear Tawheed, every human being feels the truthfulness and the heart's connection to it. Even though they may reject it, they feel it within themselves, as Allah said about Fir'aun, Pharaoh. When he heard the message of Tawheed from Musa, Allah says, "Istay qanatuhu an fusku." Their souls confirmed with certainty that it was the truth, but they rejected it out of arrogance. For whatever reason, they rejected. So Allah put that in us so that no one has an excuse to naturally choose to reject the truth, because it's in their nature to accept the oneness of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. 
So that was the first foundation of freedom that Allah has established us on. This is why the Prophet said, "Kullu mauludin yuladu al fitr." That every baby that is born is born upon the disposition of believing in Islam of La ilaha illallah. This is the disposition that Allah created all of us upon. And this disposition that Allah created us upon, brothers and sisters in Islam, is a disposition that one will reject, as the Prophet said in his hadith, it is his abawani, his parents, yuhawidanihi, that makes him a Jew, yunasiranihi, he makes him a Christian, one who met jisani, he makes him a magi, meaning he makes him follow whatever other way of life. The environment also. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed in every one of us this. And the scholars say this fitrah, as is agreed upon by the companions, the sahaba and the tabi'een, and the leaders of this religion, that this fitrah is the natural disposition to believe in al-Islam, as Allah ta'ala has established them upon. For this, these things, is natural in the human being. And that he chooses these affairs when he sees the message of Islam, he will accept it. And if he reject it, he's fighting against his own self and his own nature. And that's why Allah gave us freedom. He gave us free will and put that in us. For Allah has made the human being with the freedom to choose an Islam. And this is the reason why Allah Ta'ala has sent prophets and messengers. But this is the reasons why Allah sent prophets and messengers to clarify the truth, to give clear evidence, clear arguments of the truthfulness of Islam. Every prophet and messenger came with that to deal with any doubt that may come. But it requires you to learn and understand. That's why Allah Ta'ala says, La ikraha fiddeen, that there's no coercion in religion, there's no forcing no one upon any religion. The guidance has been truly made clear for misguidance. This is why Allah says there's no force. Because once the person hears the truth, it's unarguable arguments. Our, this religion has arguments that cannot be argued against. This is why prophets and messengers were sent. This is why books were revealed. And the religion was taught. So you can choose to accept the truth and reject that which is opposite of it. This is why Allah Ta'ala has given us freedom, free will. Just, and it's natural for you to believe in the truth, just like it's natural for a baby to just eat. Just like it's natural for them to us to be with intimacy and marriage and companionship. For Allah showed concern for his worshippers by establishing this freedom. And that when a person goes against that nature that he's been given, to believe in the oneness of Allah, then his wisdom and understanding become altered in his life. He starts seeing that which is wrong to be that which is good. He sees evil to be good and good to be evil because he allowed himself to fight against that nature and accept false understandings and it alters them. And that's when we come into play to clarify the truth for the people, to clarify the deen of Islam for them. To refute, to refute their arguments with knowledge. And that's why Allah sent prophets and messengers. So when the human being knows his Lord and his deity with a knowledge that is befitting for him to have to repel the doubt, then they will worship Allah with a true worshiping of him. And they will learn the legal verdicts of the deen of Allah and his legislation. And this is, as we said, why Allah sent prophets and messengers. So understand, brothers and sisters in Islam, whomever Allah gives this type of reality to is the one who understands Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabiyyana Muhammadin wa ala ali wa sahbihi ajma'in. Bismillahi wa alhamdulillah. Hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fi kama yuhibbu Allah ta'ala wa yarda. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. For this reason, brothers, the scholars of Islam they went in detail to to define according to Islam what is حرية.
What is freedom? The scholars have defined it based on the religion of Islam, based on the evidence that has come from the Quran and the Sunnah, based on what has been established in this religion. One of the scholars who has spoken about this issue is that Imam al Sakhawi. He defined freedom. He says, Al Islam al insana al bashariya al hurriya. That Allah Ta'ala and that Al Islam has given mankind freedom. But, but however, that freedom is muqayyada. It has restrictions to being free to do fadila, that which is virtuous. So that the soul will not descend and fall into vices, that which is radila, that which is wicked and vices to attach you to them like drugs and alcohol and false attachment. So Allah restricted freedom to that, to be free to do virtuous acts. So that you will be able to control yourself, the nafs that is within you, so you will not fall into vices. And he has, he made it muqayyada restricted to adal, to being just and fair and balanced. Hatta la hatta la tatahurraku al nafsu ila dhulmi wal jawr. He's restricted freedom to he restricted freedom to being just and fair with others so that the desires will not enlighten and become fired and fired up to oppress and do crime to others. Allah Ta'ala he says has made freedom muqayyada restricted bil haq with the truth of his religions that he sent hatta tamil nas ma al hawa so that the soul and the desire the person's soul will incline towards what it desires allah has restricted freedom muqayyada restricted it to khairat to doing good acts and good deeds has restricted it to choosing others over yourself and being kind and generous so that mankind will not be put to toss, the, the test, the soul will not be put to trial and test and get caught up into ego to themselves and wanting, wanting what's for themselves only. Being caught up into their own egos. So Allah Ta'ala has restricted freedom to these things. He has restricted freedom to tabarud an al by us mutually distancing ourselves from what has been defined as evil. So that wicked acts and deeds do not burst from us and become a normal practice in the society like we see today because of the false definition of freedom. Even though the soul has been given this type of freedom, it still has the ability to accept that which is opposite of that which is good, which is wicked. That which is in opposition to what's righteous, which is non-righteous behavior. When you, but the freedom of this society is a freedom that's been given to us, it's unrestricted. This is why places like in Spain, they legalize human beings marrying animals. And in some cities and states, it's okay. A man being intimate with a horse, a woman marrying a dog, because it's unrestricted freedom. Because when you have unrestricted freedom, their definition, it makes you really become bad. When you become a slave to your desires, as we see here. When they gave this unrestricted freedom, you find that the people began to do wicked things. The first of them was fornication. It became better than marriage and adultery. Then it reached beyond that to having the option to change your sex. A man can become a woman and a woman can become a man. Then it went further than that to men can marry men and women can marry women. 
Unlimited so-called freedom means enslavement to your desires. Enslavement to what you can't control in you. But Allah has sent us guidance to put that soul and nafs al to besoo. As Allah described, the soul that constantly orders itself to do evil. إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبِّي Except Allah says, except those whom Allah shows mercy upon them. For these brothers and sisters of Islam, there's a big difference between democratic freedom and Islamic freedom. Islamic freedom put man in place in their proper position in life. So the world can be upon success. But we have to be trusting what Allah has revealed. We have to be trusting what Allah has given us and to believe it to be better for us than anything else out there in the world. So that we can lead the world to the to Allah Ta'ala. We can lead the world from the worship of other than Allah to the worship of one Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. For that is our job by engulfing ourselves into this deen and learning it and practicing it. And for the sake of time, we will continue the next time we give khutbah about the freedom and talk about what is democratic freedom. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabiyyana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina azab al nar. O oh, our Lord, give us the good in this life, the good in the next life, and protect us from the punishment of the grave, of the hellfire. Rabbana. ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا O oh, our Lord please don't lead our hearts astray after you have guided us وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة and bestow upon us your mercy إنك أنت الوهاب for indeed you Allah is the one who constantly bestow and give bounty وأقيم الصلاة